Our second solution chem video deals with solution preparation, how we actually go about making solutions of specific volumes and concentrations. I just want to jump right to the example problems here. We'll fill in some of the key ideas and definitions here as we go. Uh, to take a look at the first example problem here. We're asked uh, really a question that we've already dealt with in our previous lesson. What mass of crystalline copper 2 chloride is required to make 500 milliliters of a 0.2 molar CuCl2 solution? So that calculation, like we said, we just we looked at it in the last video, looking for the mass of copper 2 chloride, CuCl2, how many grams of it we would need. We're making 500 milliliters of solution, and we're told that solution is going to have a concentration of 0.2 molar, that's 0.2 moles of CuCl2 for every 1,000 milliliters of the solution. From here we know we can just use a, a molar mass for our mole to gram conversion. A molar mass of copper 2 chloride is 134.45. Just using that as a conversion factor here. And we can see our units cancel to give us grams. Uh, this should give you a value of 13.445 grams CuCl2. One thing you might be wondering is why haven't I worried about sig figs? I didn't really put any uh, indication here how many sig figs we have. Uh, it's simply because we haven't actually measured anything yet. We haven't made the solution. And now the question that we need to ask at this point is great we know this is how much copper 2 chloride we need but how do I actually go about making the solution well remember if we if you think back to what molarity really is and I'm just gonna ask the question here how is the solution made if we think back to what molarity is molarity recall it is the ratio of moles of solute per liter of solution. So what I can't do, and this is the, the common misconception, the mistake that a lot of people will make when they're trying to make these solutions, what you can't do to make the solution is simply dissolve 13.445 grams CuCl2 in 500 milliliters of water. That won't work because that's going to end up giving you more than 500 milliliters of solution uh, to, because the, the solute, the copper 2 chloride, is going to take up some space. Uh, so we need a way of measuring this out so that we can dissolve this mass of copper 2 chloride in water to give us 500 milliliters of solution. Jumping back up here to the key ideas and definitions. Our first key idea, and this is where we figure out how we actually go about measuring this is anytime we're making solutions for accurate concentration we must use volumetric glassware to make solutions of accurate concentration what is a volume, piece of volumetric glassware? Well, volumetric simply means that the glassware is designed to measure one and only one volume. So in this case, in our example problem down here, we are going to end up using a 500 milliliter volumetric flask. Now as far as what we would actually do to make the solution, the first thing we would probably do is we'd want to measure out our, our copper 2 chloride. So I'm just going to jot that here. Measure. 13.445 grams CuCl2. And we're probably going to go ahead and dissolve it in some water. So I'll just say and dissolve in about 250 milliliters of distilled water. Okay, the reason we're going to, going to go ahead and dissolve it in water is simply because it's easier to work with, it's easier to get it into the flask. Uh, that we're going to be using if it's dissolved. If it's a powder or a crystalline, sometimes it doesn't want to go in very well. So it's just easier to, to dissolve it. 
All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this solution we just started to make and we're going to place it in a 500 milliliter volumetric flask. And this is something that you've seen in class or you will be seeing in class as far as what that looks like and what all that entails. It's real simple. It's simply a flask that's designed uh, to hold only 500 milliliters of water. You can't measure out 450. You can't measure out 760. The only thing it measures is 500. Now at this point, we still don't have enough water in it. We're not going to have 500 milliliters of solution. So we are going to add distilled water to the mark on the flask. Okay, These flasks are marked very clearly uh, with where the 500 milliliter mark would be or whatever size flask you're using. So you're going to add water to the mark. Remember, get that meniscus right on the line, just as you know how to do. And then finally, to make sure it's well mixed, we are going to cap and we're going to invert it 12 times. And we've made our solution. So as far as answering the question, how do we make it, here it is. And now we obviously had to do the first calculation, figure out how much of the copper 2 chloride to use. Um, but from there, this is how we'd actually make it. All right, this basic procedure uh, for making a solution we will use any time we are making a solution from a solid or from a crystalline substance. So we'll just jot that down up here in the key ideas. Uh, so for solutions from solids, what we're going to do is we are going to calculate and measure the mass, I'm going to underline that because that's the important point there, of the solid to use. Okay, so when we're making a solution from a solid, calculate the mass, measure out the mass, go through the glassware as, as we've shown here, and you'll have your solution made. All right, the second example problem, uh, we are making a solution from a stock solution. In other words, we're going to dilute it. You can see we're asked to make 500 milliliters of a 0.2 molar hydrochloric acid solution, but instead of being given so <laughs> solid, we're given this 12.0 molar hydrochloric acid stock solution. So instead of finding a mass, what we want to calculate here is we want to know a volume. So how many milliliters of this stock solution are we going to need in order to make the 500 milliliters of solution? So the first calculation, very similar to what we just did above, we know the solution will have 0.2 moles of hydrochloric acid in every 1,000 milliliters of the solution that we make. From here, now I'm going to use this concentration of the stock solution. I know that every 1,000 milliliters of the stock will have 12 moles of hydrochloric acid. Notice everything cancels with the exception of the milliliter of the stock. So this will give us a value of 8.333 milliliters of stock. Again, I haven't really concerned myself with sig figs at this point because we haven't measured anything yet. We haven't measured out a volume. Uh, once we would actually make the solution, we'd go back and do a calculation and see what the actual concentration is, keeping the correct number of sig figs. Again, the question I'll ask is, how do we actually make the solution? Well, we're not going to measure out a mass this time. We're going to measure out a volume. Uh, but the first thing we're actually going to do here, because we're diluting an acid, we're going to take uh, some water. We'll say about 250 milliliters. Place 250 milliliters of distilled water in 500 milliliter volumetric flask. So we're going to start by putting water in the flask and then we're, we would measure out our stock solution. We are going to measure 8.333 milliliters HCl stock and slowly add to our 500 milliliter volumetric flask. The reason why we have to add it slowly, and we always want to add the acid to the water, I'll make a note of that here, add acid to water, it's because the dilution of an acid is highly exothermic, it's going to release a lot of heat. Uh, so if you already have a significant amount of water in there, 
then a lot of that heat will get absorbed by the water. Water has a very high specific heat, uh, meaning that it takes a lot of energy for it to heat up. So it won't get nearly as hot. So we always want to start by putting water in and then adding our acid. Doing it slowly, uh, meaning a drop or two at a time, uh, will, will mean that, that there isn't, won't be as much heat generated and it'll be much safer. All right, lastly, uh, we just need to fill with water to the mark as we would always do whether it's a solid or a solution and then finally we want to cap and invert 12 times and we would be done. So the key idea here, uh, coming back up here to the key idea section, uh, for dilutions, so in this case we're diluting a solution we already have, uh, we are going to calculate and measure the volume, not mass, volume of stock solution to use. And that will allow us to make our solution as we need to. All right, the last example problem here uh, deals with another dilution, but it's the, the question is asked um, a little differently. Yeah, just taking a little look here. It says you're asked to make four serial 5 to 1 dilutions of a 2.5 molar sodium hydroxide solution. And it tells you here this means you will dilute one part stock solution to five parts dilute solution. You will then repeat this four times with the solution you just prepared. Uh, if you're asked to make 100 milliliters of each dilution, explain how you would perform the dilution and calculate the concentration of each. All right. So first of all, let's just figure out what this 5 to 1 means in terms of, of how much we're going to use. So we're told we're going to make 100 milliliters of each solution. So we're just going to start our problem with that. 100 milliliters of solution. And we're told that the 5 to 1 ratio means that we are going to have 5 milliliters of solution that we're going to make for every 1 milliliter of the stock that we're going to dilute. So notice milliliters of solution cancel. So really we're taking 100 divided by 5. That's 20 milliliters of stock. So to make the solution, what we would do is we would take our stock solution. I'm just going to draw a little picture here. I think it works best instead of writing this all out as far as steps are concerned. We would take our stock solution. So we'll just label this. This is our 2.5 molar NaOH stock. And we're making 100 milliliters of these solutions. So we would take a 100 milliliter volumetric flask. I'll just roughly sketch out a volumetric flask here. Okay, this is 100 milliliters. That's what it is. And then we just determined that we're going to need 20 milliliters of stock. So what we would do is we would measure out 20 milliliters of stock. And we would put it into the 100 milliliter volumetric flask. We dilute it to the mark and then we'd have our first dilution made. Well, the term serial means we're going to take the dilution we made and we're going to dilute it again. So we would need another 100 milliliter volumetric flask. And here's another 100 milliliter volumetric flask. And then we'd take 20 milliliters from the solution we just made and dilute that to 100. And then we would continue this until we had four total dilutions. So I would do this two more times. That would give me one, two, and then two more would give me four. Um, and thus, that, that gives us our five to one dilution. All right, so as far as steps are concerned, I think we can see exactly how that would work here. Now, if this were an acid, remember, we'd always want to add it to some water in there. Now, sodium hydroxide is not an acid, so you could put the solution and then add water. But if it were an acid, you would want to add water first. All right, as far as calculating the concentration of each, because there is five times as much water in each succeeding dilution, this means there's going to be five or one-fifth the concentration. So if our first, uh, if our stock solution was 2.5 molar, as it is, uh, then for our first dilution, we would just divide that by five, and that would give us 0.5 molar, and that would be the first dilution. And then to find it for the second dilution, we would just divide it by 5 again. So 0.5 molar divided by 5, that would be 0.1 molar. That would be for the second. 
And then again, continuing with that, we have 0.1 divided by 5, that would be 0.02 molar. And that would be for the third dilution. And then finally for the fourth, we'd have 0.02 divided by 5, and what is that, 0 0.004, I believe, molar, that would be for the fourth. So each one just gets uh, five times less concentrated because we keep adding five times as much water. All right, so that's the end of the content there. Uh, we have three practice problems here. Uh, it'd be a good time maybe to pause the video, try them on your own real quick, and then uh, see how you did. All right, first one here, uh, we're asked how we would make a solution starting from a stock solution. So uh, as we would normally want to do, that we want to find a volume of stock solution to use, we are going to make 250 milliliters of the solution. And that solution is going to have a concentration of 0.355 molar, so 0.355 moles of the sodium phosphate for every 1,000 milliliters of solution. And then using our concentration for the stock, we can see that the stock contains 1.5 moles of the sodium phosphate in every 1,000 milliliters of stock. Moles cancel. Uh, this should give you a value of 59.167 milliliters of stock. So as far as how we'd actually make it, we want to take our, our volume of stock, we're going to measure that out. We want to put it into a 250 milliliter volumetric flask, fill it with water to the mark, cap it, invert it 12 times. Notice this is not an acid, so you don't need to add water first. You always can. There's nothing wrong with that. So you could have some water in your flask first, add your stock in, mix it up, and you're good to go. All right, question two uh, goes uh, back to making a solution from a solid. Uh, so here I'm going to measure a mass. I want to know what mass of the solute, in this case the iron 3 nitrate hexahydrate, FeNO3, 3.6H2O and we are going to make 100 milliliters of solution 100 milliliters of solution and the solution is going to have a concentration of 0 .15, 0 0.015 moles per liter or 1000 milliliters one thing you might be wondering is why I've left the water off of here in the label uh, for the solute. Whenever you go to make the solution, the water that's trapped in the crystal, thus the hydrate, it just becomes part of the solution. Uh, so when we measure this out, we do have to account for the water. So when we calculate our molar mass, you do need to include those six moles of water. Uh, you'll find that that molar mass is 350.00 grams Fe. NO33.6H2O. For every mole of the iron 3 nitrate. Uh, but the solution itself, as far as what the solute is, it's really just the iron 3 nitrate. The water isn't going to be a solute. It's just going to become part of the solvent uh, with the other water you put in there. Uh, the mass that you get here uh, should be 0.525 grams. FeNO3 3.6H2O. As far as making the solution, you'd want to measure this mass out, dissolve it in probably about 50 milliliters of water because we're going to make 100. And then you're going to put that into your volumetric flask and fill it to the mark of water and cap and invert 12 times, and you've made your solution. All right, last question asks us to explain how we would make three 4 to 1 dilutions of a 10.5 molar sulfuric acid solution and ask us to determine the concentration of each. Well, why don't we just go ahead and determine the concentration of each. We know that each solution is going to be four times less concentrated than the previous one. So my first dilution, the concentration would be 10.5 molar divided by four. Okay, and that will give you a value of 2.625 molar. If I just keep dividing them by four, this would be the first one, um, if we just keep dividing them by four, the next one would be 0.65625. Obviously, I'm not really concerned about sig figs here. 
And then uh, the, the final, the third one would be point one six four zero six two five. I probably shouldn't write that many decimals there, but uh, that's all right. Uh, so uh, just dividing each of them by four each time, that'll give you those. As far as how we would make it, notice we're not told how much to make. We're not told we need to make 100 milliliters or 250 or 1,000. Uh, so in this case, you could really pick a volume. I'm just going to pick 100 uh, because that seems like a pretty, pretty, simple, uh, pretty simple number to start with. Um, so if we're going to make 100 milliliters of each of these solutions, I would start with my 10.5 molar stock solution, 10.5 molar stock, and again I'll use a 100 milliliter volumetric flask, so 100 milliliters, 100 divided by 4 is 25, so I would take 25 milliliters of my stock, dilute it to 100, and then I would do that two more times. So I take the solution I made, take 25 milliliters of that, put it into 100 milliliter 100 milliliter volumetric flask, do that one more time, fill them to the mark with water, cap, invert 12 times, and you're done. All right, that's the end of the video.